Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox news video. Today we've released LaunchBox for Android version 1.12 and with this it makes it easier than ever to get up and running with LaunchBox on Android. We've got a lot of new improvements, some fixes, and some new features. So I'm going to jump right into it here because our main new feature here for LaunchBox for Android 1.12 is the ability for LaunchBox to automatically download RetroArch once you start a game up. It'll also download the correct core depending on the platform you have. And right now, I kind of want to walk you through the process. As you can see, I already have some systems imported. So what we're going to do is start fresh here with the new system. Very easy to do. Import games. From here, I'm going to choose the folder to import my games from. Mine are on my internal storage. Downloads. Got a folder called ROMs with a bunch of different systems in it. We're going to go with NES, select this folder, and you can see, since my naming convention is correct for that folder, Nintendo Entertainment System, our platform for imported games automatically changed to the correct platform. Moving down a bit, region to prioritize, North America, file extension, I'm going to keep all files because I may have some that are zip, some that are unzip. Now I'm going to proceed with the import. We'll let LaunchBox do its thing. We're going to go ahead and reload, and now we have our NES games imported. As you can see, automatically downloaded our clear logos, some box art, all the information we need about these games. But the one thing I don't have set up yet on this system is an emulator for NES. So what I'm going to do is just find a game I'd like to play. We'll do Adventure Island 2. We're going to choose Play. Now, as you can see, it'll give us an on-screen prompt. Now, again, I don't have RetroArch installed on this system. So LaunchBox for Android can now automatically download RetroArch and configure the correct core for said emulator. We're going to choose Yes. It's going to go through the process for us. We want to install. Another on-screen prompt. RetroArch needs to run through the first-time setup process. So we'll choose OK. We need to grant access to storage. And now RetroArch is set up for LaunchBox. You can just go back to LaunchBox. We're going to try to play this game again. And there we have it. So I'm on a larger tablet. I've got the on-screen controls. No controller is connected right now, so I can just start playing like it is. LaunchBox automatically downloaded RetroArch, set up the correct NES core for us. And yeah, this just makes it really easy for new users to get into this on Android. They don't have to go through Google Play or sideload anything at all. LaunchBox can now automatically download RetroArch and download the correct core per platform, so you can be up and running in no time. So definitely easy enough. And what it did was kind of choose the easiest core to use, but if you want to go in and change the core, LaunchBox can automatically download that new core for us. So we're going to choose that game again, but this time we're going to go to Emulator Settings. As you can see, our emulator is RetroArch, our core is Nestopia, but we can actually change it from here, and it's going to give us a list of all of the cores that are compatible with Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. Let's just say we wanted to swap this core for BNES. We're going to back up, we're going to play the game again, and I had to freeze this part here. As you can see at the very bottom, underneath our box art, Downloading core started, super quick, goes through it really fast, and there we have it. We're now using a new core super easily, automatically downloaded it for us because we have that core associated with this game now. Another awesome new feature we've added to this release for Android is the ability to easily update RetroArch in all of its cores just with the press of a button. So from our menu, we've got a new Manage RetroArch section. At the very top, you can see RetroArch is already up to date, but let's just say we've got an update pending. Update RetroArch, give us an on-screen prompt. This is going to update RetroArch to the latest version, and it'll update all of the cores. We'll just choose Yes. Again, LaunchBox is going to do its thing for us. And now we're ready to roll. We're fully up to date with RetroArch, and we can start playing our favorite retro games on our Android device using LaunchBox for Android. And now with this new release, LaunchBox will keep track of your game's playtime automatically, but you will need to sign in with your LaunchBox Games Database account so you can sync your playtimes across Android and Windows. So to sign in, we're going to go to our menu, 
sync status, I'm not connected, so I will need to sign in. At the very top, sign into the LaunchBox Games database. We can go ahead and sign in. Now I'm successfully connected to the LaunchBox Games database. Would you like to enable syncing your game statistics now? I'm going to choose yes here. You can also sync at any time. We'll go back to our main. We can just head into any of these sections, or you could do all games. From our menu, sort by. You can see we have a lot of different options here, but now we have our playtime, and this is going to give us our playtime right here. I'm using the wheel with details view here, so you can see playtime on each of these games. And this is going to be synced across Windows and Android as long as you're signed in with the same LaunchBox Games database ID. And finally, along with all of these new features, we've also added full support for MAME for Droid 2024, Yuzu Early Access, Citra Nightly, and Citra Canary. If you're interested in checking out all of the other fixes and improvements for this release, I'll leave a link down below to the official Android change log. We really hope you enjoy LaunchBox for Android. Definitely keep an eye on the channel and the forum because we've always got new stuff on the way. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.